Hey guys, welcome to Clockwork Dandy Noodles for another breakdown of the Ancient Megas Bride. This is episode 11 of part 2, which means we have one episode left to go. I've got a few bits and pieces to run through. Also, making sure that you guys know that my winter review will go out on Monday next week. Keep your eyes peeled for that video. I'm going to go through all the new shows coming our way, all the things that I'm looking forward to watching, and what I'm breaking down on the channel. So make sure you give that a little look to see what new things are really on the horizon for us because I think winter is going to be a quite a interesting season it's quiet and busy at the same time in two weeks time you're going to have my end of season review where I will crown my top three anime of this entire season and of course hand out some anime awards make sure you check that out that's always a really fun one to do and I can't wait to bring it to you guys again and at the end of the year we're going to have the anime of the year award for the first time ever I'm going to go through my top three anime and some fun awards of the year as a whole so thank you guys so much it'll also allow me to be a bit soppy for all the people who have supported me this whole year it really does mean a lot i might get soppy in that video so fingers crossed that you guys can stick with it but let's get straight to it because i will say that the pacing on this show is just crazy i think it's getting really fast i am not ashamed to hold my hands up and say i might be a bit lost there's a few bits and pieces that have run past me i, I completely forgot about zach and his powers it didn't even click that it was technically him allowing Zoe to go off the walls. There's a lot of good things going on, but there's also a lot of things that I'm just not keeping up with. I don't know if it's just me being dumb, but it might just be the case that the anime is moving fast and it's missing bits and pieces out. It would seem that the curse has just picked Granny next as a conduit. Granny says that the kids are dead. I don't know what to believe because the wolf seems adamant that they're alive, but that could just be a trying to convince yourself it's okay they're fine i don't know what to believe on that one but it would be interesting to see if we will ever get a answer because we've only got one episode left theoretically they're going to be taking down the big eyeball monster is granny going to come back because currently she's been consumed adam technically foresaw that somebody would eventually want to destroy the guardian and philomela protective measure to i guess one last hosar to protect your daughter which i like they both died and they left her all on her own and it did feel a little bit hopeless in a sense. So I guess it's that last hope. But it's also quite sad as well that the hex or I think they call it a hex, but he calls himself a program. It looks like Adam and I get it. It's probably made out of his likeness, but it's quite sad for Philomela who just wants nothing more to just hug her dad, to see her dad. And this guy who looks like her dad, who then says he isn't her dad, is, is there. It's just really, really sad. I think the bottom line for me when it comes to Adam is he was just so smart, super, super smart. And this guy was always thinking one step ahead. And the reason why Elias wasn't allowed to take out that last measure in Alcyone was because it had to be destroyed by malice. It had to be a bad thing. It had to be somebody wanting to actually destroy her to trigger that last line of code. I did call the Alcyone recording device type thing because I think what came to mind whenever I thought of her big robot in 86 it's been a while since we broke that show on the channel down but there was the robot that was recording everybody's daily life and it did remind me of that and i did wonder if at any point she would maybe be able to transfer those memories to philomela which is exactly what has happened so i'm very glad that that's how they've been able to give philomela some idea of her parents i know technically it's in third person so she's actually only seeing the three of them and she's actually seeing herself as well which must be really weird to see yourself as a kid i look at pictures of myself as a baby and i don't really see it as me or i don't really feel the connection there so it must be quite odd for her to be watching pictures of herself it's also quite sad because she's realized that alcione was really really important to her and she's not actually in any of those memories because she's the one holding the camera essentially she is that camera person which is always sad when you've got older pictures where we didn't really have timers or anything that somebody's always behind the camera i like the fact that everyone nowadays you can just set the timer on your phone and you can run in quickly and get in that picture that's definitely an area where technology has improved for the better so i'm very glad that we can do that absolutely clever 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 was adam i also like the fact that he was holding out hope that lisbeth wouldn't go as far to destroy her grandchild but we we know she did end, end up going down that route Lucy stopping the Adam Hex trying to like actually get some out of lisbeth was a bit of a irritating one for me i know technically we want to get these answers but it did feel like she could just try asking maybe the hex could have just held out and waited because 
It's this stalling that ends up allowing the eyeball to consume her. And then I'm going to call it the final boss because it does feel like it's the final boss for this season, this whole arc. The final boss then going absolutely crazy. The power level starts to really ramp up, but it just feels like nobody gets answers. And there's so many people right now who just want answers or a piece of Lisbeth. I do hope that we can get some kind of justified result where maybe the kids aren't dead and the werewolf does get her peace and maybe she is brought to some kind of trial. I'm not advocating that we kill Elizabeth here. I am just saying that she needs to be brought to trial of some sorts, whether it's a magic prison or something, I, I don't know. At least hoping people can at least get a peace of mind to help them move on and go past that grieving process because of Lucy. She's grieving her whole family, which is really sad. There's a lot of people who are just hurt by the actions that she has caused. Now let's talk about Morrigan because you guys in the comments, especially the readers, you guys love Morrigan and I've been told that she's a kick-ass character. Sadly for me in the show, she appeared, I didn't know who she was and I, I literally feel neither here nor there because I don't think the show's done a very good job of introducing her or really actually doing anything with her. So she's here now, which is great, I'm very happy, but I still don't quite understand the relationship between her and Chise, how she knew Chise needed help and what was promised to get her to help Chise in the first place. So there's, I've got a lot of questions which maybe the manga answers, but in the show, because I'm only going off the show, they're not answered. We've got one episode. So I don't quite feel hopeful that they're going to cover these questions. Yeah, sure, you guys can answer them, but anime only. I'm expecting the show to at least give me enough there to not need to have to ask those questions but i do absolutely love the effect of the hex turning into the spear i love her motion her motions are fluid she looks like she's dancing through the fight she looks like she's really enjoying it i absolutely love the fact that the spear does these like circle motions and i think dancing feels right with this because she's such a nimble character especially for somebody who is pregnant she's very very nimble and i also kind of like the fact that Ruth goes to help and he just jumps in to aid her too. Understanding between the two but scary if you see that Chise is being affected by her which again implies there's a link there but I don't know enough about it so it's just at the moment there's this really OP character who's helping out. So it makes sense that the final battle has to be with everybody. Everybody has to get involved. Really do like the way that she's animated. I thought that was really, really clever. Now, Ellie is saying get inside me got a little chuckle from me. It made me laugh. That was funny. It's a very handy technique. And I like the fact that he's able to have these areas where people can shelter and be protected because there's a lot going on on top of the surface. Morrigan also being affected by the power stealing was interesting because she is technically a god. And I guess she's up against another god. So I guess the only person who can really damage god is another god they're attempting to send the eyeball back to where it belongs banish it not exactly defeat it but banish it is what i guess they're going for but i do think it makes sense that everybody is going to be involved in the defeat of this it's a nice wrap up it's a nice one lucy does get some answers from a very unusual source which is the werewolf which does make sense because she wasn't herself obviously she was being controlled and the fact that she would go out to help kids makes sense because she has lost kids well, she hasn't got them right now. We don't know if they're dead or alive, but her trying to help makes sense. She doesn't want to see any other kid hurt because I think a lot of the people involved in this fight are mothers. The grandmother is a mother. Morrigan is a mother because, or a mother-to-be because she's about to have a kid. I guess Adam is a parent. The hex is kind of him. And then you've got this werewolf who's also a mother. A lot of the people involved are mothers, which I do wonder if that's been done on purpose. I do like the way that Chise and Elias have these little interactions now. His hands on her shoulder from behind and then she looks up and back at him. It's just a really cute little thing and I don't often talk about romance aspects of this anime too much but it's there. I think it is cute. I like the fact that he's reassuring. He feels very protective when he does that which I really really like and again it really blends into the character as a whole. Love the way that she looks back and up at him and he then supports her, her face. I don't know, it's really cute. I just wanted to mention it because I don't often pick those bits out of the show and it's not the first time it's happened. It's just the first time I'm going to mention it. I also love the fact that it's Elias when he stood there and everyone's looking at him and he's just like, wait, what? 
it's like, oh, I have to do something, do I? Now, I will give kudos to the writers for bringing this power use back in. Elias divides himself initially to keep an eye on Chisei, I think, in part one. Did remember this because it was very clever because they split his head into two and that was funny. So I really enjoyed that. But it's nice to see them pulling it back and it having a key role in this fight because, as I often say, if you're going to give us a power, use it again. Don't just show us once and then completely forget about it. So I have huge respect for the fact that they brought this power back and I think it really is helpful as well so obviously he's able to divide and split the party up to give them a bit of an advantage which I think is really really nice the eyeball bit where they're saying oh I don't know where the book could be where could the book be and we saw the grandma literally get absorbed into the eyeball was a bit of a weird one for me because it felt really glaringly obvious the eyeball puns that I am making it just felt really obvious that the book was inside at least the eyeball and it's just weird that of all of the places that Morrigan was attacking, she didn't at least let a you know, a spear go off in that direction. At least just once towards the eyeball. And even out of curiosity or her boredom, that she wouldn't try to attack the big giant staring eyeball looking at her. It's a bit weird. I guess those are my thoughts for the episode. I think we're going to get a big wrap up next week. And I will give you my overall thoughts and score for the season. Because I tend to do that on the last episodes. But it's an interesting episode. I will say that I'm pretty clueless of a lot of things going on. So, of course, I'm naturally missing things. But whether it's down to my stupidity or the anime just brushing over things quickly, I, I can't tell. So I am sorry if I'm just being really, really dumb. But I am really enjoying it. I think the ending is in sight now. So we will be interested to see how things wrap up. I don't want them to crush it all down because it feels like we've got a lot of ground still to cover in just one episode. Naturally, I think there's more material out there for the show anyway. So there could be another season. But... I don't know if they've done the best adaptation job in the world for this season at the most. Adore season one. I love season one to pieces. I like the movies. I like the OVAs. This I'm not quite sure about. At the moment, season two for me, it's definitely not got the same weight behind it as season one has. Season one was just great for me. But we will see where it ends up because I'll give you a score next week. And we hold out for that end of season review because there could be some awards even for characters in there. We'll see where the show ends up in that awards system. Normally I try to cover most of the shows but keep your eyes peeled and thank you guys so much. I hope you're looking after yourselves. Have a great day. Bye guys.